Hi, my name is Yudai Tanaka, and I'm going to talk about our latest work that I did in collaboration with my colleague Jun Nishida and my advisor Pedro Lopez at the University of Chicago. Here, the user myself is experiencing a fire safety training. They're looking for the fire extinguisher under the table. It seems they are looking at the wrong direction. But somehow, they magically find a fire extinguisher. Existing interactive systems solve this situation by presenting some form of instruction, such as showing arrows or markers, or showing picture-in-picture -picture windows, or allocating spatial sounds to targets, or even providing vibrotactile feedback. All these approaches are great, and they are actually using a lot of user interfaces today. But looking at them closer, they all follow the same principle. They present feedback to other sensory modalities, but not to the head motion itself. It is actually the user's task to translate this feedback into their head motions. For instance, I feel the vibration here on my neck, and I move my head in this way by myself. Instead, I like to propose a different concept in which interfaces directly manipulate the user's head orientation and turn it into an output device. So to reveal our trick, we don't use any visuals or sound, but instead, we electrically stimulate the neck muscles and actuate the user's head to look at the fire extinguisher, which we call electrical head actuation. Let's continue watching this example. Now the user put off the fire, then the training says find a new fire. Our device actuates the head upward to look at the fire on the shelf. Now the training sets evacuate the building because the fire is on the ceiling. However, the user is unsure about the evacuation route. Here, our device dynamically actuates the user's head along the trajectory of the evacuation route. So as we've seen so far, in our approach, we don't need to instruct the user to turn their head, but instead, it just happens. Well, our approach was inspired by a line of research that applies haptic feedback to the user's head. Let me show you a few great examples. First, JLBL uses a spinning weight to create inertia as long as the user is moving the head. Head Blaster takes this concept further and uses air jet to apply weak resistive forces. Unfortunately, both of them are not capable of lowest reactuating user's head involuntarily. Instead, hunger over applies mechanical pressures on the user's head, which causes a reflex that turns the head left or right. However, since it's a type of stretch reflex, it's hard to control this effect. So far, the only way to realize robust and controllable head actuation is these custom-made medical exoskeletons, which unfortunately require bulky motors to be attached all around the head. In contrast, our approach does not require any hardware above the neckline. I'm actually wearing the complete system which can reliably actuate the user's head orientation in all four cardinal directions using the electrical muscle stimulation. Here, my colleague Alex notes down involuntarily by a stimulation from these two electrodes. This pair turns the head to the left, similarly to the right, and this pair for nodding up. If you are interested in customizing our approach for your application, our paper shows more different electrodes placements and the resulting head motions. We implemented a PID control of the stimulations for cardinal directions, which runs on a wearable setup with a 4-channel stimulator carried in a backpack. Also, to support a variety of applications across mixed reality, VR, and real life, our system is compatible with three different tracking systems, HoloLens, VR headset, and AirPods. As we already saw with the fire safety training, 
a direct head actuation enables applications not possible before. For instance, we can transmit the head motions from the user on the right to user on the left. Here, they synchronously, not to the music, without looking at each other. In the same way, we can also communicate how fast they should play the instrument. It's even possible to design a hands-free, eyes-free interaction based on the user's neck. Here, to notify the current sound level, the sound slider directly actuates the user's neck angle, and the user can update the sound level by voluntarily moving their neck. Our device can be also used for rendering false feedback. Here, the user playing the VR boxing feels the impacts of punches through by the opponent. We evaluated electrical actuation in two studies. In the first study, we validated the control accuracy. We actuated the participant's head orientation to acquire different targets. We found that our system has an accuracy of around 8 degrees for static targets and around 9 degrees for moving targets. In our second study, we explored participants' experiences in our four applications. Let me show you some highlights. Oh, I, I see it now. <laughs> okay, there's a fire under the table. <laughs> now to conclude, we introduce an alternative concept to traditional modalities in controlling our head movements, where interactive systems directly manipulate our head orientation by electrically stimulating the neck muscles. We hope our work will inspire researchers to further delve into this avenue. There are several ways to expand on this work, such as how the head actuation interacts with gaze redirection or the long-term effect of our technique on the user's neck posture. Preserving the user's agency in this modality is also an exciting topic. To accelerate researchers in exploring these questions and more, we have uploaded all the source codes to the link shown on the screen. So I'd like to thank my collaborators again. First, my colleague Jun and my advisor Pedro. Thank you for your listening. Please check our paper for more details.